If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back. I have to apologize. I know it's been a long time since my last episode, but I've been hard at work and I hope you can appreciate the results. And if you recall about a year ago, I disappeared for the same amount of time because I was working on this. This is a, a Glidecam clone that I made an attempt at. And the problem with this one was, well, it just didn't work. So I gave up on that and here I am about a year later attempting the same thing, only this time I'm going after the Steadicam Merlin design. And I've actually got it to work fairly well, so I hope you can find that it works for you too. So if you'll join with me, we'll take a look at the Frugal Floater. All right, so here's the floater close up. It comes in about four basic components. You've got the gimbal right here, which is what the whole thing floats on. You've got this stage, which allows you to adjust the weight from front to back with this handy knob. You've got a SEMA quick connect on top. You probably know that I'm pretty fond of these because they're inexpensive and they help lock your camera in, allow you to swap it between uh, pieces of gear really quickly. Uh, you've got this back counter right here that pivots, uh, allowing you to counteract the weight displacement caused by your camcorder's LCD flip-out monitor. And finally, you've got this uh, counterweight arm that ends in a counterweight. All right, operation is pretty straightforward. You're simply holding the rig by the gimbal handle, walking around with it, and you can pan either by putting two fingers on the gimbal itself, or you can do what I did, which is to turn the actual gimbal handle in the direction you want to pan and have the whole rig kind of swivel or pivot on the bearing. Uh, I seem to have better success with this, and it worked for me. Now, if tilting is fixed, you can set it by the adjusting the macro slider ahead of time and then locking it down. And here's a picture of your complete list of parts. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with specifics. You can find a complete parts list in the, in the description, but I do would like to point out the unusual parts, which is the macro slider rail, which you can find on eBay for about $14. That's what the whole rig is based around. That gives you a nice front-to-back adjustment. Um, and also, the gimbal is based upon W.S. Clater's design, or W. Sclater. He's got a YouTube channel and a great website, DIYcamera.com. And he uses the Traxxas 5151 universal joint. It's a remote control uh, car universal joint, and it works well as a Steadicam gimbal. Here's the tools you'll need. It's a pretty standard list. You have a drill, you have some flathead screwdrivers, a Phillips head, Pliers, a wrench, and if you're going to cut PVC, use PVC ratcheting cutters. They're only four bucks at Harbor Freight, and they are awesome. Okay, step one is to take your macro slider rail. Notice there's a hole on one side. This comes with a screw. You'll have to remove it. It has a clip that holds it in place, but you'll remove it. Uh, then I'm taking a SEMA Quick Connect, and I'm attaching it to the platform about in the middle. This is optional. Save about 10 bucks if you don't do this, but it's very handy. Then take one of your... Uh, half-inch PVC plugs, drill a quarter-inch hole in it, and you're going to hold it to the bottom of the platform. 
you're going to put a quarter inch or quarter inch washer on top. Put your quarter inch screw through that, through the plug. Uh, put your lock washer over the screw so that it falls into the bottom of the plug. Then attach um, your quarter inch nut and hold it with your finger. Then you can begin screwing the screw through the top into the PVC plug uh, with the nut. But of course, your finger isn't going to be able to hold it until it gets to the bottom, so you're then going to insert a flathead screwdriver between the nut and the sidewall of the plug and continue screwing. This will then collapse onto the lock washer uh, and it should hold the PVC plug firmly in place. Do the same exact thing on the opposite side at the end of the groove, which is also large enough for a quarter inch screw to go through. And when you're done, you'll have your uh, macro slider rail with two half inch PVC plugs on the bottom with which you can attach other half inch PVC parts. Finally, you're going to take your threaded rod that's got your uh, hockey tape on it and a uh, quarter inch nut. Now I should probably take a minute here to explain exactly what this is because if you look back at the parts picture, this is already assembled, but I never explain anywhere in the video how to assemble it. Even though it may look obvious, here's what it is. This is an inch and a quarter uh, threaded rod, a quarter inch in diameter. And you can either take some threaded rod and cut it with a rotary tool, or you can take a machine screw that's an inch and a quarter in length and cut the head off. As long as it's a quarter inch in diameter, you're fine. I then took the bottom half and covered it with about a four or five inch piece of hockey tape, which is what you see on the back end there. And then I took a quarter inch hex nut and screwed it on top of the rod until it hits the hockey tape and sticks to it. And that's how you get your assembly. And back to the program. And you're going to screw the open threaded portion into the bottom of the rail. There's a, there's a nice quarter inch hole, threaded hole, uh, ready for you. You're going to tighten it up with your wrench. And this section is ready for attachments. Okay, here's how you make your gimbal. You're going to take your uh, Traxxas 5151 Universal Joint. Um, this comes actually in four pieces, so you, if you mess up, you can do it again. Um, but you're going to take the little spiked ball joint thing out of one of the uh, Universal Joints. I did this by putting it in a vise and spreading it with uh, some needle nose pliers. And you can join the two together, like so. Now notice that I've actually taken one end, this is the male end, and I've whittled it down. Um, all the way to the base so that I could put a bearing, a uh, uh, roller blade bearing over the top of it so that it's about the same height as the bearing and it allows me to put the bearing over it, which you couldn't before. So you got to whittle down the side things um, and then go all the way down to the bottom of the uh, universal joint. And this is probably the hardest thing you're going to have to do aside from balancing the whole rig because it's going to take some time. You just get a knife. Um, and whittle it down. If there's an easier way to do this, I'd like to know what it is, because it did take a while to get it flush with the bottom of the universal joint. Because um, it can't really be lopsided, so you gotta do your best to make sure this thing is level. Then you're just gonna simply put a little washer over it, a little lock washer, and a little screw. These are all computer sized, so I'm not exactly sure where to get these. I just had a ton of them. But when you're done, you'll have a universal joint uh, that swivels on a roller blade bearing, like so. You're then going to take the female end of that and push it over the uh, hockey taped threaded rod that you've screwed into your uh, macro slider rail. And then you're ready for the next step. Okay, onto the simple stuff. Uh, you're now going to build your uh, counterweight attachments. Here I've got the PVC end cap, and I've uh, drilled out a slightly smaller hole in, a quarter, in the quarter inch screw so that I could actually screw it through. I think this is a 3 16 hole or something. Um, I can actually take my screw and screw it into the end cap, but I don't need any, any nuts to hold it on. Now you can do the same type of thing with a plug, obviously, as you'll see for the bottom counterweight, this is the rear counterweight. Then I'm just putting in some scrap into an elbow and then putting the end cap onto that. And now this is what I'm going to attach my count, my back counterweights to later. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now the next uh, thing is to assemble the bottom counterweight. 
Uh, here I'm just putting a lock washer into a quarter inch hole that I drilled into the other uh, half inch PVC plug. And then I'm just putting in the longer uh, machine screw and securing it with a nut. The rest of the parts I'm just putting together, uh, this is the counterweight arm. It's just the 45 degree angle PVC elbow to with a shorter piece of PVC to a 90 degree elbow to the longer piece of PVC and then I'm adding the bottom counterweight attachment that I just built. This is the gimbal handle. I'm taking a piece of C PVC. This is a C PVC coupler and I'm pushing it into my PVC handle. Now why do I need a C PVC? Well, because that's what a rollerblade bearing will fit into. It won't fit into a standard uh, PVC coupler, so I use C PVC. And as a result, to put the handle, which is made of regular PVC, I needed to slightly uh, pad the end of the handle so that it would now fit inside the C PVC coupler because it is slightly wider than standard PVC. Now all that remains is to attach everything. So I'm going to put my counterweight arm onto the front uh, half inch plug attached to the platform, the back counterweight onto the back plug. And then I'm going to put up a little piece of tape on the uh, rollerblade bearing so that it will fit snugly inside the CPVC coupler that the handle is attached to. And uh, that's your basic rig ready for balancing. Okay, now comes the really hard part, which is balancing the rig. Um, if you don't have a balanced rig, it's not going to work very well. So this step is very important, but it can be frustrating. So I'll try and give you the best tips that I know of to make it work properly and not drive yourself crazy. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get some kind of bubble level to put on your camera or on the platform. I'm using uh, kind of a standard, just centered type bubble. Tell me when I'm directly in the middle so I can tell if I'm pitching left or right or front to back. Um, you can get any kind and mount it anywhere on your camera. This goes in the cold shoe. Get these at Amazon for $2. You can also mount something to the stage or the macro rail if you want. Um, but once that's on, you can tell just by looking at it if you can't tell by how your rig is uh, lurching like this one. Oh, and there goes my slider rail. If you don't lock the slider rail down it's going to do that so. And just use the knob to adjust it. That's what the friction knob is good for. The smaller knob on the macro slider is you can add friction without locking it down completely and still be able to adjust it with the large knob over here. So as you can see, this looks pretty uh, stable. Um, I'm not going to unbalance the whole thing and rebalance it because it is really frustrating and hard sometimes. But a few good tips are um, on the rear count counterbalance that acts as a counterweight to the flip out monitor. About three or four weights to start. And then as the thing goes back and forth, you can pivot this to compensate for it. If you've got a center bubble level like I do, you can actually turn the rear counterweight in the direction that the bubble is going. It's really intuitive and easy. As far as the weights on the bottom, um, I've got six and a half weights here. It's a good thing to note that if you use some of the half weights that the wing nut is actually the same weight or close enough weight to the half weight that if you're using a half weight uh, without the wing nut to get it to balance right, you can just take the half weight off and put the wing nut on and it'll be the same weight. The thing to remember mostly about this uh, bottom counterweight is that you, you'll know if you've got too few weights because the thing will just go crazy and you won't be able to control it. Um, so you keep adding weights and then it'll obviously stabilize, but you'll have too much weight if you have it quote unquote stabilized and then you do one of these quick lateral motions or front and back and the thing will pendulum or swing. If it does that, that means you have too much weight and you have to take some off. So it's basically trial and error. Try the larger weights. And if it's too much or too little, add one of the smaller weights. If you get to the point where you have a half weight on there, one of the smaller weights, and you want to put the wing nut on, take the half weight off because it's the same weight. So good luck with this. It's difficult. It's difficult with any uh, gimbal-based uh, stabilizer. Everyone always says the same thing, that balancing it is a real pain in the butt. But you have to do it or it's not going to do anything right. All that remains now is to take the rig out in the wild and give her a test. Uh, now, I'd be really interested to see pictures or footage or hear ideas or comments that anyone may have about using this rig. Uh, they are kind of touchy, so it's going to take a little bit of work, um, but I'm always interested in a better idea or how I can improve the things that I build, so please feel free to share.
Now the main thing to remember with a rig like this or any gimbal based steady cam is practice, practice, practice. And once you build this thing or even buy one in the store, you're going to need to uh, spend some time and exercise patience in getting to know it. See what it can and can't do. Try different things. See what works best. I really don't advise you just take one of these out on location cold turkey and expect amazing footage because you're not going to get it. There's a lot of examples on the internet of some great, great stuff you can get with a rig like this. But every one of these operators has put time in and figured this thing out because it can be frustrating. Uh, if it is frustrating or you don't think you can handle this type of a rig, go for the PVC stabilizer rig. It's cheaper, it's e really easy to master, you can just pick it up and immediately it's going to work for you. Um, and you can get some good footage with that. But whatever you decide, good luck. Hug. More hugs. More hugs. Hug a bugger. Hug a wugga bugger. Hug a 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 b